welcome to Another Bite, where we rewatch the most innovative and intriguing pitches from Shark Tank. I'm Jory, and I'm joined by Ariel. Hello! And John. Hey, how's it going? Today's episode is for you dog lovers. Do you ever look at your car and think, doggone it, there's no easy way to buckle my doggo in and transport them safely to the park? It's really rough, if we're being honest. If this is sounding familiar, today's product is positively for you. Will these founders snag a Shark Tank deal, or are they barking up the wrong tree? What? No more doggo puns. But I'm having a ball. All right, fine. Here's an ad. You know it, we know it, next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success in 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. And with over 1,400 integrations, there's a ton of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at hubspot.com forward slash sales. In today's episode, we have Zugo Pet, and Zugo Pet comes to us from founders Carolyn and Jules, and they're asking for $100,000 for 10% in their business, which is a million-dollar valuation. Now, Zugo Pet is trying to solve for the problem that it's tricky to travel with dogs, right? Securely fastening your dogs can be pretty dangerous, and as we see by these wonderful crash test simulations of pooches flying out of their carriers— <laughs> No dogs were harmed in the making of this episode, by the way. You know, it can be quite dangerous if you don't have your little pet properly secured. So Zugo Pet is here to help. And Zugo Pet is a car seatbelt for dogs that sort of looks like a crash harness, right? That you dangle off the back of your seat and your dog is just firmly strapped into your seat. And it's interesting because it actually causes the sharks to start all laughing because it does look a little strange to have your little pooch just hanging from a seat because it suspends the dog against the seat, which apparently protects their spine. This product comes also with some attachments where you can carry your dog from the seat into this adjustable baby Bjorn so you can really take your dog on the go. But thinking about our product and our pitch and our founders, what are some of our initial thoughts of Zugo Pet? Oh, boy. This is a hard one to talk about because I don't want to tell anybody that their dog shouldn't survive a car accident. Oh. I don't want to tell anybody that. <laughs> we got the morbidness. If I had a dog, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I don't disrespect you if you want to do it. I can't do it. It's too much. It's a doggy rocketeer pack. It holds your dog upright and straps him to the seat. I know. Like, when they showed the safety test, I gasped at first because I thought it was a real dog. Yeah. Like, it took me a moment. So I get what you're saying, Johnny. Yeah, I, it's not for me. I don't think I'm doing that for my dog. You're not going to strap him in? <laughs> not like that. I mean, can't you just, I mean, I get it. I know. They're right. I guess if you're going to put a dog in a car, you should strap it in safely. This is like an untenable position for me to even talk about because like now I'm, I'm like the dog hater because I don't want to like save dogs lives. But I just it's just too much. They've gone too far. They're out of control. John, if it makes you feel any better, I'm also out on this product. So cute idea, cute concept. I just feel like when the founders just kept going back to the crash safety test mm -hmm. and they didn't have any other concrete data and numbers yeah. to kind of support, they utilize that so much as their crutch and you get analysis paralysis in some ways. Like for them, they were just so focused on this one study that it made me lose credibility. Like, but look, it saved dogs' lives, you know? Right. I think if you buy a Zugo pet, your dog's going to outlive you, you know, like they're going to be strapped in so tight. You're going through the windshield and your dog, Super dog. I don't want my dog to outlive me. He's supposed to come with me. You're my best friend. Oh my God. <laughs> There's the darkness. <laughs> See, I told you I've got an untenable position. It's unsupported. Okay. But like, let's talk about the numbers that they did talk about. It's retailing for $160. 160 bones. That, too. That, I couldn't justify it. That was a it. firm number that while we don't know how many dogs die a year in car accidents, we do know that this one costs $160 to save. Woof. But, you know, even with its steep price tag, they're selling them. Year to date, they were talking about $180,000 in sales, all on organic and word of mouth marketing. So, like, clearly there's an audience. 
Yeah, they're selling cute. Yeah. They're selling something that's comical. Like, of course, people want to buy one and snap so cute photos of their dog hanging from their backseat. Of course, the earned media is there. But besides that, I just don't. But, so you said that they were selling cute. But Mark was like, there's benefits to selling cute. But I do think that this is actually a product that would most benefit for selling fear. And like, that's where I saw like some misalignment between yeah. the pitch and us seeing all these crash dummies of dogs like smash into walls. <laughs> But then they're like, oh, but it's like this cute baby Bjorn. If you buy the add-on and you can carry your little dog. Right. Yeah. Jory, that's a great point. So I felt like it was misaligned. ADT doesn't go market for like the fact that you're having popcorn and watching a movie. Like, you know, they're not, they're not. Yeah. There's a major disconnect there. Yes. Good point, Jory. And like on top of them, not really having concrete numbers. I think at one point the founder was even like, oh, you know, this is an $80 billion industry, just like throws out this random number and it's like in crash testing, like dummy testing, because there's no way that the dog seatbelt market is $80 billion. Now we don't get any pushback from the sharks, but like, where did that number come from? Yeah, I actually did some market sizing for this product. Okay, I did a little you. research. I did some market sizing. It's a market of 10 I think there's 10 buyers of this product in the world, okay. probably. <laughs> like, it's, nobody's going to buy this thing for 160 bones. No way. <laughs> the total addressable market is 10 people. Yeah. Well, the sharks, I felt, were very lukewarm from the beginning. I thought they kind of perked up when all the dummy testing was happening. But we did see sort of Mark and Lori break down two issues with this product. One, it's really complicated. Like, I don't have a child. I don't know how the child seats work, but it looked as complicated as like hooking in your child. I think that's something that like Rob mentioned where he's like, I already <laughs> do this for my kids. I don't need to do this for my dog. For Fido. Yeah. Right. So there's like the issue of having to educate your consumer. Right. Mm -hmm. And then there's Mark that was like, it kind of feels like you're a little unprepared here. And maybe he was being flippant and I will accept that as an answer. But he was like, if you don't have any statistics, invent some. And I was like, ooh, this feels worth digging into because in your opinion, you're put into the founder's shoes. If you didn't have the statistics on like how many dogs die a year, how would you like bring data onto your side and like tell the story of this product if there are literally no studies done on the problem this product is solving for? Have some focus groups with dog owners. Mm. You can still get great insights from more qualitative settings. Like not everything has to be quantifiable when it comes to like data and especially when you're pitching for Shark Tank. I would also encourage if they had any conversations with any vets, because like that was also my other biggest piece is like, is this comfortable for the dogs? Like the mm. dogs are literally shaking. They're like, like, is like there hanging. Any, <laughs> right. Is there any data around, you know, this puts less strain on their bones and their joints so they have less like joint issues. So like, I, I get it. Like you want to keep your dog safe, but like have more of those kind of like story points that you can easily weave into your narrative. Like you don't need to have always the super hard facts, especially if you're willing to put money into crash studies, then you should be putting some money into other studies User as well. research yeah. or something. Yeah, for sure. Similar to valuations, market sizing is also made up. You can literally go and do some estimates. You can say, I know how many people there are in the world. I know what percent of people in theory buy dogs. And I largely know the lifespan of a dog is somewhere between 10 and 15 years. Therefore, I know how many dogs die every year. So I do like his advice, which is like, hey, you don't need to overcomplicate this. You don't need to like charter mm -hmm. McKinsey to go out and like build a market size for how many like dogs die every year. Like you can just do some math on it. But like at least we want to see you come in here and understand that in order for us to want to invest in this company, mm -hmm. we need some sense of how big you think the market is, how much of it you can penetrate and how much it's going to cost you to actually like do that. Yes. What were your thoughts of like the naming Zugo Pet? Any initial like branding thoughts on that? It's not Neo Pets. <laughs> I thought it was a Yamaguchi where my brain went to before first. I watched it. I was like, oh, is this like a Yamaguchi? Like, remember Yamaguchi Pets? A Tamagotchi? Tamagotchi. Oh, Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi? <laughs> <laughs> Yamaguchi. What's a I like Yamaguchi? That. <laughs> Yamaguchi is a figure skater, just FYI. It's a region of but Japan. <laughs> you were onto oh something. Oh, my God. <laughs> Tama, what are they called? It's a Tamagotchi. Ta I never Tamagotchi. had a Tamagotchi. Tamagotchi. Yeah. Tamagotchi. I wasn't wealthy like you two when I was a child. I couldn't afford a digital pet. I, I had like the McDonald's knockoff. <laughs> more of a generational yeah. thing. Yeah. No, I never had a Tamaguchi. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, when I heard it, I was like, Zugo pet. Ooh, this must be like a new like Tamaguchi. digital like pet, not a pet safety system. And this comes back to your disconnect, Jory. Yeah. Like you yeah. nail it. Is this about fear and security or is this about like fun and happiness or is like, is this just a random thing that like invokes futuristic feelings of like 
digital pets. Zugo pet. Zugo pet. <laughs> yeah. It's a hoverboard for your dog. Oh my gosh. But ultimately, the product was too complicated. The marketing felt mismatched. So no deals were made. So since the tank, this company still exists. Okay, we'll start there. It's a 2019 episode, still exists in 2023. They have since introduced the Jet Setter, which is a premium car seat and airport oh. compliant pet carrier. Mm-hmm. Uh, so mm-hmm. they are expanding their inventory and product offerings. As of November 2021, they are profitable. They are making $3 million in annual revenue. But according to their Instagram, their hero product, which is called the Rocketeer, which again, with branding, like, Do you really want to name your product after something that launches at full speed into the atmosphere (laughs) if you're trying to save dogs? Like, who am I? Maybe I shouldn't work in marketing if that's the case. (laughs) But they will be relaunching their Rocketeer product. Still waiting on that relaunch, but very much still a company, even though they didn't get a Shark Tank deal. You know what is not safe? Is strapping a rocket to your back. Yeah. You know what blows up? Blasting off. Yeah. (laughs) You don't want to propel your dog to new heights. To your dog? (laughs) Today's episode was written and produced by the mythical Matthew Brown. Additional support comes from Melanie Romero and editing from Robert Hartwig. If you're a fan of the show, meh, even if you're not a fan of the show, tell a friend. Word of mouth is the best way to support the show. That does it for me. We'll see you next episode here in the tank for another bite.